Hey, it's Chris. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install one of these, a Nest Learning thermostat. Step one is going to be to turn off the power. So you're gonna to wanna to find your main electrical panel, find the breaker for your heating and or cooling equipment and put that into the off position. This protects both you and the equipment. It avoids blowing a fuse or damaging a breaker or damaging your equipment in any way. Step two is to remove the old thermostat. So you can start by removing the cover. Some covers are gonna pop off while others will snap off. Some of them need to be unscrewed and some you're gonna to need to do a little bit of both. Step three is important. This one is going to be to check the voltage of your system. So we're gonna check what the voltage is at the thermostat, not at the actual heating plant or cooling equipment itself. Nest is not gonna work with high voltage. So it's not going to work with a 120 volt or a 240 volt, which is gonna have the thicker wires. You have to make sure this is a low voltage system, like a 24 volt system. That's the only way Nest is gonna work with it. Typically the voltage is going to be on a label or sticker inside your thermostat or it might be imprinted on some type of label in there. On some older systems you may not be able to find this sticker or it just might not have one and that was the case for me. You can check the voltage with a voltage meter if you don't have one of these. Here's what you're going to have to do. I'm going to want you to grab out a wire stripper. We're basically going to have to figure out the gauge of the wire. So gauge is a measure of diameter and a high voltage system, so a 120 volt system is going to be ran on a 14 gauge wire. A 240 volt system should have been ran on a 10 gauge. So we're gonna take our wire stripper and we're gonna measure the diameter of the wire. Keep in mind when you use one of these, what you're measuring is the actual diameter of the bare copper. So not that sheathing part that goes around it. So if your wires are 14 gauge or 10 gauge or like a 12 gauge, those wires are too thick and you have a high voltage system, Nest is not going to work with your system. What you're looking for is one of those much smaller gauge wires like a 20, 20 gauge or maybe an 18. That means that you have a 24 volt system and Nest is gonna work. Again, make sure for safety reasons that you have turned off power at the breaker. If you have not and you happen to be dealing with a high voltage system, you could very easily electrocute yourself and that's not something you wanna do. That will ruin your day and possibly your life. Once you have verified that your thermostat is a low voltage one, it is compatible with Nest and we are ready to see what is in the box. <laughs> Keep in mind that much of this packaging will be recyclable. Once you've verified that your system is in fact a low voltage system, it will be compatible with Nest. If that's the case, our next step is to remove any jumper wires. A jumper wire is a short wire run between two of the connectors in your thermostat. You're not gonna need them in your Nest system, so you can go ahead and get rid of them. You can see here this little blue U-shaped wire is the jumper wire in my existing system. Typically a jumper wire is going to go into one of the connectors labeled R, uh, or RC or RH or one of those or a variation of those. That's most typical. In my case, I have a boiler for the heating system and a regular AC unit with ductwork for the cooling system. This thermostat controls the cooling system only, so I will probably have less wires than you do. So keep that in mind. Yours might not look exactly like mine, but your goal is to try to match up all of the existing wires in your system with the new Nest base. Nest gives you these nice little labels so that you don't forget where and what each wire connects to. You're going to want to use these. So take the time right now to peel these stickers off, label every single wire that you currently have before you disconnect it from your existing thermostat. A little note here, if your previous thermostat also included a humidifier or dehumidifier, this might be labeled E or W3 or HUM or DE. 
HUM. You can only connect one of these to the new Nest base, which could be a problem and might not be compatible then with your system. That's another thing to keep in mind before you buy and install Nest. But if you go to nest.com backslash two labels, I'll put that link below, you should be able to verify this information. Once you have labeled all of the wires, go ahead and peel off the old thermostat base. Now be careful that you don't remove or strip any of the labels off as you pull them. It's also not a bad idea to take your finger or a pliers and put a bend in the wires so that they don't fall into the wall and then you lose them and have to fish them out of the wall because that that will be a pain. Or take this wise piece of life advice of a, an electrician friend once told me is if you're going to go fishing, you best go fishing for fish, not for wires. Now, depending on how your existing thermostat is set up, you may or may not need this metal plate. So if you are attaching it to a metal electrical box, this plate is how you'll be able to attach it. Now this next step here is optional. You can use the trim plate if you want. Sometimes if your previous thermostat was a little bit larger, it's gonna leave some marks or maybe an unpainted place. You could either fill in any holes or repaint this area, or you can use this trim plate to cover it up. I decided to go with the trim plate. Next, we are ready to attach the base. Make sure that you pull all of the wires through the hole in the nest base and don't lose any of them in the wall. I'm just using the back of this screwdriver to start the screw. These screws are self-tapping, so you should be able to screw them in no problem. But if you can't, uh, grabbing a drill will not hurt. There is a little bubble that is built into the nest base. Use this to make sure that your thermostat is level. Once you like where it is, go ahead and install or tighten down your screws. Next, we are ready to connect all of the wires. Now the Nest system makes it really easy to connect these. You can simply push down and then clamp them into place. If you can't pull the wire quite enough, quite in far enough, you can take a pliers. Depending on the previous connection to your old thermostat, your wires might be a little long and you might need to uh, trim back the copper part. The exposed length of wire should be about 3 eighths of an inch. After all the wires are connected, we wanna make sure that they sit flush with the wall. Next, you are ready to attach the Nest display. We'll simply line up the Nest logo so it is at the top and center and press it into place until it clicks. You'll hear a little snap noise and then it is attached. Remove the sticker from the face of your new Nest and now we are ready for a guided setup. Next, we will want to turn the power back on to our heating and cooling equipment. So go back to your electrical panel, find the breaker that you turned off and turn it back on. Next, we are ready to set up the nest. I'm gonna guide you through the setup in my circumstances. You may have a few more or less steps depending on how you choose to configure your nest. First, it will have you select and confirm your language and then establish your internet connection. You're going to want to find the name of your wireless router and connect to it here. If you don't find it listed, you can go ahead and type it in. Next, enter your Wi-Fi password. And if you're pretty old school, this will remind you of a rotary dial phone, except instead of having 10 digits, you have a lot more and symbols and letters and a whole mess of stuff. And right about now, you'll really be hating yourself if you have one of those Wi-Fi passwords that's like 20 characters long, a bunch of symbols, letters, numbers, and case sensitive. After getting my Wi-Fi password wrong about half a dozen times, I got a successful connection message. It will take a moment to set up. Next, we need to establish a location. It will pick our location based off our router. And if that is your location, go ahead and confirm. That's not where I'm located, so you can go ahead and find it manually, first by continent, and then by country, and zip code. Next, pick the type of building your nest is located in and also the room that you will have it placed in. Right now, we are in the living room. Ask you if you're a pro, I'm a homeowner and it will automatically try to detect the equipment you have attached. So this is where if you have wires attached to ones that aren't registering here, uh, the connection isn't working, so you'll need to pull this off and try to reconnect those wires. This is correct, I have both cooling and a fan. Next, we get to set the temperature and use what they call their eco temperatures. Now that we have configured our nest, we are going to go through a system test. You're going to want to test it now just to confirm that it is in fact working. So you will be testing each component of your system. We're going to test the air conditioning first. And it is blowing cold air, so we're good. The next component of the system it will have us test is the fan. Once you've tested all your components, you're ready for the next step. And then now you can connect to the Nest app. So if you haven't downloaded this, you can download it off of the Apple Store or Google Play. It will give you a product key to pair with. Once you've done that, you have now completed the install and setup of your new Nest. With that, may your Nest, pun intended, stay warm, cozy, and dry, and your heating and cooling bills always be low.